Today we're going to create a very basic 3D model of a three drawer filing cabinet. I had already created it to show you what the end product was going to look like, but then I ended up closing Blender before I started recording and I hadn't saved it. So uh, I can't show you, but you'll see at the end of the video what it looks like. And um, I just want to go over real quick. This is going to be very basic um, box modeling. This is very simple. A lot of objects you can make using just a few simple keys. So real quick in Blender, G is grab. Let me make sure I'm clicked into Blender here. G is to grab, S is to scale, and um, R is to rotate. If we were to hit one of those keys, we can then say X, Y, or Z. X is left and right, Y is front and back, and Z is up and down in Blender. So for example, if I hit G, I can move it all around, but if I hit X, it now stays on the X axis. And the same for scaling. If I hit S, I can scale it, but if I hit Y, now it's only gonna scale on the Y axis. Also, if you hit tab, you can go into edit mode and edit individual parts of it. For most part, we're going to be editing the faces. So I can click up here to choose faces. I can choose which face. And then the other two keys that you're going to use over and over again is E and I. E to extrude, which allows you to bring things out. I inset, it moves the face in. E, and again, you can go up or down, in or out. So I'll go down and then I'll inset a little bit. E to extrude, I to inset, E to extrude, I to inset, E to extrude, I to inset, E to extrude, move it back down. So that's that's basically what we're going to be doing for everything today is everything I just taught you. And we'll create a filing cabinet like that. And we will create a default scene. I am going to use the default cube just because most people don't. First thing we want to do is right now this is going to rotate. Uh, and scale and everything straight from the center there, uh, which is great for some objects, but something like a filing cabinet, you want its origin to be at the bottom of it, where it touches the ground. So first thing we're gonna do is gonna hit tab to go into edit mode, make sure everything's selected. If all your uh, entire object isn't selected, just keep hitting A until everything is selected. And then we're gonna say GZ1, enter. And that just lifted it up, so now the origin is at its base. I'm going to now say scale and I'm going to say Z and I'm going to say 1.5 actually let me change that escape out of that hit tab to go out of edit mode and hit scale Z 1.5 it made it uh, so its size was one and a half times its original height and now I'm going to say scale Y 0.5 enter so now you can see that it is about the size of a filing cabinet great uh, and we may want to apply the size so we can hit control A and apply scale. Uh, not really necessary for what we're doing today, but uh, that's a good habit to get into. We'll hit tab. I'm going to choose faces. I'm going to select this face. Okay. And uh, right now you don't see it on the screen, but I'm center clicking. So if you have a mouse wheel, you center click and that's how you drag around. I'm going to say I to inset. I'm going to extrude in. I'm going to I to inset just a little bit. I'm going to extrude back out to here. Now I'm going to hit Control R and I'm going to move the mouse around so it's close to the edge where you can see it going like it's cutting it in the middle. And I'm going to scroll up on the mouse wheel so I have two of those lines. I'm going to click and hit Escape. And then I'm going to go back into face mode. I'm going to choose this face, Control, click, click to choose all of those. I'm going to I to inset. I'm going to hit I to inset again so they're insetting at their individual faces. And I'm going to just move in just, just a teeny tiny bit. And then I'm going to extrude it out a little bit. Great. We have our filing cabinets. We have our three drawers. Let's go ahead and make the handles. So I'm going to I to inset. I'm going to move it down to about here. And then I'm going to scale on X and make that handle a little bit smaller. And these have pretty big, if you've seen filing cabinets like this, they have pretty big handles on the front. Um, I'm actually going to scale these down a little bit more. I'm going to hit S, but now if I scale, you can see they're bringing them together. We don't want that. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to click individual origins. And that will scale them. Now I can hit S and it'll scale them to their own centers. And I'm going to zoom in here a little bit by scrolling on the mouse wheel. I am now going to hit extrude. I'm going to extrude them in a little bit. Inset inset them just a little bit and extrude them back out. Now I'm going to inset just a teeny tiny bit and I'm going to scale Z and I'm going to squeeze it down like that. Then I'm going to G Z to grab it and move them down. And then I'm going to extrude E, bring that back. And now 
that's actually true though. So let's grab those on the Y. So G, Y, pull that back forward a little bit. Might have extruded those handles a little more than my liking, but we'll just leave it for now. Um, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna switch over to the Cycles renderer, which is a fairly slow renderer, but it gives you some more photorealistic stuff. I'm gonna click here for how it renders out. I'm gonna hit tab to get out of that. Um, so just for our scene here, I'm going to hit uh, F3. I'm going to type in plane, hit enter. It puts a little plane under it. I'm going to hit S and I'm going to say 15. That will scale that up some. So now we have a ground plane. Looking good, uh, but it's being lit from behind. Lit from behind. I'm going to select the light here. I'm going to just um, shift D to clone that light, duplicate that light, move it over here. I'm going to hit O on the number pad to move our camera somewhere. And I'm going to grab our camera and move it up some. As you can see, it's slow to render out, but it's getting there. I might have done the spaces a little too wide around the drawers, but you can always adjust that uh, to your liking. Let's work on the textures because our model is done. I'm going to select our model here, and I'm going to go back over here to um, shaded mode. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit tab. And right now we still have the center of the drawers selected. If not, you can what you can do is select one and then hit control click. Oops. Shift click would be a better option. There we go. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit control plus 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 just a couple times so I have the entire handle selected. I'm going to go down to materials. Now there's already the default white material. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say plus to create a new slot and then I'm going to create a new material. And then that isn't assigned to anything yet. I'm going to name this, we'll just name it metal because it's going to be the metal handle. And I'm going to assign it to the selected. Let's give it a base color, kind of a gray color. But then what we'll do is we'll turn up its metal here to make it metallic. And we're good for that. So now I want to color the rest of it. I already have the handle selected, so I'm going to hit Control I to invert our selection, uh, which actually is, already has this material. So we'll just make sure it's assigned. So we'll say assign that. And I'm going to try to eyeball kind of a tan color here. So I'm going to go something like this. And I'm going to make it a little darker. That might be good. Okay, we are pretty much done. I'm going to hit tab to get out of edit mode. I'm going to go into render mode, see how I like that color. It might be a little too orange for my liking. So I'm just, again, going to eyeball this, make it a lighter tannish yellow color. And uh, I think that's pretty good for what we've done today. Eh, maybe a little more, a little darker of a color. A little more in, again, I'm just eyeballing the color. I'm gonna hit F12 and start letting that render out while I say goodbye to you. Again, yeah, I definitely put too big of a gap around the drawers there. So when I was insetting that, um, I might wanna do that a little bit less. But just wanted to show you that you can quickly model out something. Looking at this, even with all my talking and explanation, it was, it's been about eight minutes. Uh, so definitely could have spent a little more time on it, but I think it's looking pretty good for the time we spent. I'm really unhappy with how wide the gap around the drawers or uh, it wasn't that big when I did the first time. So again, uh, we could adjust that. Uh, and in fact, why don't, why don't I do that? Let's, uh, let's do this. Let's go into edit mode. Let's get again, select, shift select, the center of each of these handles. I'm gonna hit control plus, a couple times, let's get out of render mode here so it goes a little faster. And right about to there, let's get in front view with number one on the number pad. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna scale this up. I think that might, mm, might fix what I'm wanting to fix here. Actually, let's undo that. Control minus, eh, control plus. Control minus to way about there. Scale these all out like that. I think that will look better. Let's go back into render mode and let's just hit F12 to render this out. Yeah, it's a little bit better. Uh, so I'll just let that render out for a minute here. Uh, it's probably going to take my computer quite a while. I don't have a uh, GPU that uh, is compatible with GPU rendering. But there you go. You have a model of a filing cabinet 
Uh, I did it in cycles, that's why it's taking so long to render, but if you're making this for a video game or something, and you use Benchmark or Eevee, uh, you would see uh, this would render out pretty quickly. And uh, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There's a link in the description. And as always, I hope that you have a great day.